Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and the peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, be with you all. Amen. So it's great to welcome you. It's Feast of the Assumption, and of course we've got a couple of First Communions to celebrate. A little bit later we'll have Ronan and Zach, so we welcome you both and your families uh, for this celebration. Feast of Assumption is, of course, uh, not so much about understanding mysteries, but rather about celebrating the glory of the Virgin Mar Mary, and recognizing that precious role she had uh, as given birth to Jesus and been there at his growing up and right through his life. She is very much with the church, which is the fruit of Christ's labor. So we honor her today in a very special way. Uh, we have varying intentions uh, Kathy Barrett, Rebecca Morris, Michael Morley, John Phillips, and Philomena Romedias, all recently deceased. We pray for Francis Colomé on his first anniversary, Pauline de Costa, Maria Jesus Mendonca, Christiana Maria de Carmen Machado, Maria Concesso de Souza, and for all the souls in purgatory. And we're asked to remember. Uh, Stacey and Alfonso on this their first wedding anniversary and among those who are sick and there are many we, we ask your special prayer for John McGuire very loyal and fair to member of the parish for many many years he's very ill at the moment so the good health we've been asked to pray for and I think we all want to pray for all the people of the world especially those who are in very trying and difficult circumstances good health of Tyson Ritu and family to Tyson, Tracy Dias and family, and also Rona Desar, and a Mass in Thanksgiving, which to some extent duplicates what we do anyway with every Mass, is in Thanksgiving, is what we are about. So we do welcome you, and we welcome all the people who are following us online. Many people have stayed with us and enjoy being one in spirit and one in heart as they gather today as well. Let's have a few moments to look into our own hearts, prepare ourselves try to be ready to particularly open our hearts to the word of God and be ready to fully celebrate the great gift the Mass is. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You are Word made flesh and glory of the Father. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
So we pray. Loving Father, we give thanks for all your blessings to us, and in a special way we give thanks for Mary, the mother of your Son, now gloriously assumed into heaven to share the glory that her Son has prepared. May, may we always follow the example that she has given us, and follow the way and the teaching of Jesus Christ as she did. And we make that same prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading, a reading from the book of Apocalypse. The sanctuary of God in heaven opened, and the ark of the covenant could be seen inside it. Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman adored with the sun, standing on the moon, and with the twelve stars on her head for a crown. She was pregnant and in labor, crying aloud in the pangs of childbirth. Then a second sign appeared in the sky, a huge red dragon which had seven heads and ten horns, and each of the seven heads crowned with a coronet. Its tail dragged a third of the stars from the sky and dropped them to earth. And the dragon stopped in front of the woman as she was having the child so that he could eat it as soon as it was born from its mother. The woman brought a male child into the world, the son who was to rule all the nations with an iron sceptre. And the child was taken straight up to God and to his throne. While the woman escaped into the desert, where God had made a place of safety ready, then I heard a voice shout from heaven, victory and power, and empire forever have been won by our God and all authorities for his Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks God. Response to your psalm. On your right stands the queen in garment of gold. On your right stands the queen in garment of gold. The daughters of kings are among their loved ones. On your right stands the queen in gold of Ophir. Listen, O daughter. Give your ears to my words. Forget your own people and your father's house. So will the king desire your beauty. He is your lord. Pay homage to him. They are escorted amid gladness and joy. They pass within the palace of the king. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Death came through one man, and in the same way, the resurrection of the dead has come through one man. Just as all men die in Adam, so all men will be brought to life in Christ, but all of, the com all of them in their proper order, Christ as the first fruits, and then after, the coming of Christ, those who belong to him. After that will come the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, having done away with every sovereignty, authority and power, for he must be king until he has put all, the, put all his enemies under his feet, and the last of the enemies to be destroyed is death, for everything is to be put under his feet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mary 
has been taken up into heaven, all the choirs of angels are rejoicing. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and went as quickly as she could to a town in the hill country of Judah. She went into Zachariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. Now as soon as Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. She gave a loud cry and said, All women, you are the most blessed, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why should I be honored with a visit from the mother of my Lord? For the moment your greeting reached my ears, the child in my womb leapt for joy. Yes, blessed is she who believed that the promise made her by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit exults in God my Savior, because he has looked upon his lowly handmaid. Yes, from this day forward all generations will call me blessed for the Almighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name, and his mercy reaches from age to age for those who fear him. He has shown the power of his arm, he has routed the proud of heart. He has pulled down princes from their thrones and exalted the lowly. The hungry he has filled with good things, the rich sent empty away. He has come to help Israel, his servant, mindful of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, of his mercy to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then went back home. The Gospel of the Lord. I want to talk this morning about two popes. The first pope is Pius XII, Pope Pius XII. And when I was 11 years old in 1950, Pius XII declared that the great mystery we are celebrating today was a doctrine of the church. And now I want to think of the present Pope, Pope Francis, and something he uh, put on Facebook yesterday. This is what he said. Old age is the fitting time for moving and joyful witness of expectation. The elderly man and woman are waiting, waiting for an encounter. In old age, the works of faith, which bring us and others close to the kingdom of God, are by now beyond the powers of the energy, words, and impulses of youth and maturity. But precisely in this way, they make the promise of the true destination of life even more transparent. And what is the true destination of life? A place at the table with God in the world of God. We think of the, of Our Lady, we think of her as she's often depicted, as in that rather lovely statue we have here on my left. She is holding a child, but she's wearing a crown. And quite clearly, this is not the Mary of Nazareth. This is the Mary that we envision as we think of her reigning in heaven. But the Mary we are remembering today was the Mary who died and then was taken up to heaven or fell asleep and was taken up to heaven. And that where Mary was a widow woman. She had been a widow woman for a long time and when her son got up and started going around, her only son got up and started going around preaching, she was left on her own and her family were quite cross about it. 
Why isn't he looking after his mother? And then, when he was dying on the cross, that terrible death, he said, someone has got to look after my mother, and he entrusted her to the Apostle John, and so she became our mother too. And then she had to live through the horrors of her son's death, and it was a truly horrible death. And the mystery of his resurrection, and the coming of the Holy Spirit who had already come upon her. And then the long, long years of quiet aging. As she watched the church begin and flourish, but also suffer, she saw the martyrdom of Stephen, and the martyrdom of James, and probably the martyrdom of uh, James, uh, the, the so-called brother of the Lord later on. She lived to be an old woman. And she was weak and tired. The power, the energy, words, and impulses of youth and maturity had left her. But she was waiting for her true destination, which was to sit at the table of the Lord. So when we think of Mary, we should think of this withered old woman. Her skin browned by the sun and wrinkled with sorrow. This woman who prayed and then who was taken in old age up to the glory of her son, body and soul. Now if you've been listening, you'd have heard that I was 11 in 1950. So how old was I in 1946? I was seven. And I made my first Holy Communion in what is now St. Paul's School, but was then Nativity Convent School, in a beautiful little chapel with other children. So for Zach and Ronan, this is a very special day. They are going to find a place at the table of the Lord. They're going to eat his body. They're going to receive him into his life. And that is the beginning of a journey where they can go on receiving him, go on enjoying his comfort, his presence, his power in their lives as they grow up, as they become men, as they become dads, as they become granddads, and as they become, when they're 83 year old like me, great granddads, though I'm not a great dad, granddad, as a matter of fact. Now, about this time in his, uh, 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 more than, well over 100 years ago, St. John Henry Newman preached a celebrated sermon on the parting of friends. And today, I am parting from my friends in this parish. This is my last, the very last time while I shall that I shall serve as a deacon in active ministry in this parish. And what is special about my friends? Because you are all my friends. What is special about it? I remember when I had just been ordained my, the first Sunday, the first Holy Week of my, uh, after my ordination. Um, Teresa saying to me, I love Holy Week. And her face lit up with joy. And I thought, well, don't we all? But then, then I experienced how Holy Week has, has been celebrated in this church. And the great joy of it. I mean, just to wait one simple example, how the young people, Jesus' youth, after the Blessed Sacrament had been removed from the church at midnight on, on, on Holy Thursday, spent the rest of the night in prayer. I think of the choir, the choir in Holy Week and the choir in the, uh, that has sustained us, and the meetings of the choir during lockdown over the virtual meetings where they planned the music for the uh, live stream masses. I think of the Zimbabweans, 
the wonderful times when they would come here and celebrate and dance the great joy of their life in Christ. I think of the great friendship in the sacristy, the support that the young women and the young men give to each other as they prepare to, work, to serve in the sanctuary. These two are my friends. I think of special occasions. I think of the many, many funerals that I have served at in this church and how beautiful they can be. Sometimes it's a funeral of a very small number of people. Sometimes the church is packed, but always there is a special feel for funeral, at funerals. And of course, I think of First Communions. And I think of the, the joy in the family, the, 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 this, 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 this way in which families are together, in which sons are with their mothers. How nice that is how good that is and I rejoice in that because it has given me great joy I think of the chats I had on, the th on Thursday morning evenings at, at uh, the Hearts Club talking about with someone say about great grandchildren being quite jealous about the great grandchildren and the outings we had from the, from the art club, the last of which, the very last of which I remember very well, which was to Market Harbour. I think of the school where I went every Monday morning until lockdown. And I think of those two great head teachers, Jerry Hurst and Kate Hales. I think of the weekday masses. When I was younger, I would cycle to mass on a weekday. I've been driving recently. But one of the great pleasures of was watching people whom I knew walking towards the church for, mo for weekday mass. And I could recognize them by their walk from a long distance. And there were the people I talked to in lockdown over the phone about a difficult next door neighbor who was uh, damaging the party wall or about the trouble they were having with their dog. And now there are people that I want to name. I want to name my fellow deacon, my, I could call him my kid brother deacon, Seamus, the young Seamus, who is going to continue his ministry among you. He too, of course, he is my friend. And I want to mention the visiting priests we have had, a wonderful run of visiting priests. Fathers Peter, Father Joseph, Father Prince, and Father Francis. All friends. And in a certain sense, there is a parting of the ways today. And I want to make a special mention of my two spiritual directors, not directly connected with this parish, but associated with it in some ways, Father Marcel Mofonjou, and now that good priest, Father Simon Robson. And finally, of course, though it's not going to be a complete parting, because we'll remain in touch, there's Father John. And I just want to mention two things about my friendship with Father John, because there's lots of other things about my relationship with Father John, which are, you know, like when he said to me, Bill, have you ever thought of being a deacon? <laughs> which set me on the course. But just two things. On Mondays, we would... Uh, after mass or after I'd been in the school we would sit in the lounge in the, in, in the presbytery and have a chat and we'd talk about serious things but we'd also talk about stuff you know, the way people do because we were friends and I remember in particular accompanying Father John once with the parish and once just with him when, when Kate and I accompanying him to Castle Bar and, and the wonderful sense of friendship we had there. So today, I am parting with friends. And to me, it is, of course, a sorrow, but it's also a joy. It's a joy to look back on and to know that I have had such friends, such friends as I now see in front of me, you, all of you.
And I ask one thing, that you will pray for me and Kate, both to the Sacred Heart and to the Immaculate Mother of our Lord, whose great, the mystery of whose assumption into heaven we are celebrating today. Thank Deacon Bill very much for those words and sentiments and the way in which he has served the parish, of course, over so many years. And we know this parting is never easy. Life is about it's been meeting and parting. It's all part of life. We're all journeying in different directions now. But we do give thanks and say a word more at the end on that. But now I'd ask you to stand for the prayers of intercession. May we trust it in the Lord and open your life to him. That same trust we place our needs before a loving and compassionate Father. Mary, in our assumption, is an image of the church coming to perfection. May our church, as the pilgrim people of God, bring the name of Jesus to be known and loved. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for political stability in Lebanon and Sri Lanka and hand to the gang violence in Hathi and military violence in Myanmar. For safety of priests in Nigeria, rain for drought affected countries in Africa, and peace between the people of Israel and Gaza. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. In this hot summer throughout our world, we ask God to give us wisdom and insight to care for the earth and to preserve his gift of water, land, and climate for ourselves and the good of those who come after us. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. For couples who celebrate their marriage this summer, that Mary and her husband Joseph may guide them and all married couples to the fullness of love. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. For Dick and Bill and Kate, we pray in thanksgiving for the gift of their ministry in our parish community. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. For our children who will receive their first Holy Communion this summer, that the Eucharist will enable them to grow in love with Jesus, their friend. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Mary is the woman radiant in God's glory. May she welcome our departed children into the joy of the Father's heavenly home, where there is no more pain, tears, or sorrow. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. In a moment of silence, we come before the Father, for with Mary we proclaim, my soul proclaim, the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit exult in God my Savior. Mary was chosen to be the mother of God. Through the beauty of God's grace, through the integrity of a life, she now reigns in glory as our queen. We ask her to add a prayers to hers. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father, we give you thanks, and today we honor Mary, sign of hope and comfort for your pilgrim people on their way. Guide us in our way, renew us in all ways through Christ our Lord. Brothers and sisters, pray that our offering will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. So, Father, we pray, may this offering which you now bring to your altar present before you. May it rise up to you, O Lord, through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we assume into heaven. May our hearts be flamed with the fire of love and constantly long for you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And, with and lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. So today the Virgin Mother of God assumed into heaven as the beginning and image of your church's coming to perfection, sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Rightly would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb, since from her body she marvelously brought forth the incarnate Son, the author of all life. So now we join the choirs of heaven as we proclaim together.
Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. We ourselves have turned away from you on account of our sins. You brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted to you, we might love one another through your Son, Jesus Christ, for our sake he handed himself over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has won for us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, to his command we fulfil and celebrate these mysteries. When he's about to give his life for us to set us free, he reclined us supper. He himself took bread into his hands, Giving thanks, he broke the bread, said the blessing, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup and again gave you thanks and praise. Gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this all of you and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we when eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come in faith. Celebrating therefore the memorial of your death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly pray to accept us also together with your Son and in this saving banquet to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything and estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope, Patrick our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her most just spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. So now with confidence we pray, as Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Dearest Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety. As we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Invite you now to pray together for peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not allow sin from the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your people. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
and of God. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, happy those called to his table.
As we have celebrated now this Holy Eucharist, received the bread of heaven, we ask you, Lord, to grant us through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, assumed into heaven, to be too will be brought to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Mass today, uh, we remembered in a special way Francis Colimau on his uh, first anniversary, and we welcome his family and we offer our condolences to you. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and all the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. You may see that we have a, a very beautiful new cloth uh, on there. It's uh, uh, in memory of Perpetua Machado in thanksgiving for uh, the beautiful wedding that we celebrated for Darrell and Martina uh, earlier on uh, in the year. So we thank the Guides family for the gift of such a, a beautiful cloth. And we thought the Feast of the Assumption would be a lovely time to bring it out, especially as we had two First Communions. So congratulations to you two. Uh, I'm going to call you out to receive your certificates from Father. So the first one is Ronan. If you would like to come forward, Ronan. And the second one, Zach, if you'd like to come up. So as Deacon Bill said in his homily to you, he can remember his from when he was seven. So let's see when you're 80, in your 80s, look back on this day uh, as well. Uh, do take a copy of the newsletter with you, very conscious. I've got a baptism coming in and a marriage couple to see, and it's warm in here. So I'll keep them very, very short. But there are a few things just to uh, draw your attention to. Confirmation candidates, uh, I did manage to send an email out to your parents uh, or to your email address. Please have a look at that email and reply to it as soon as possible. That's got the final details we need for your confirmation on there. Do have a look at the dates as well that are in the, uh, here for confirmation. First Communion people have been asking about next year. We will begin at the end of October. Uh, but from September onwards, the sign-up sheets will be uh, available. So don't ask before September, but at September, they will be available that first weekend uh, there. Uh, and also, we want to get the catechists who have helped with the First Holy Communion and the um, confirmation uh, this year together uh, for a meal. Uh, the date is in your newsletter. That will make you read the newsletter. So it is uh, in there. Congratulations to the Leicester boys, uh, the Demand community, Demand Silvassa, um, a Jew community yesterday had a football competition uh, and the Leicester boys won. I'm their mascot, so we did well. So well done to them. Yeah, Wembley and Peterborough didn't get a look in, so there we Anybody celebrating a birthday? Bertie over there. Anyone else? No. In which case it is all for you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to So just the last word before we have the blessing, and that is once more to sincerely thank uh, Deacon Bill for the wonderful way in which he has been a support to myself over a number of years now, and greatly appreciative of that, and as he said himself, the sharing we were able to have, and the conversations. But I know very well that it's not only Bill we celebrate, we also celebrate Kate, because she's been behind him all these years, and the case of 
somebody going to be a married deacon is not just a deacon, it's the family and the support of particularly the wife. So we thank you, Kate, as well, and I uh, wish you both well. Thank you all very much. I would ask you now to stand for the blessing. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks. Thanks. See you tomorrow.